The game is changing. Insurance companies are probably gonna tighten up around the like, replace everything. And this is one way to circumnavigate that and still be profitable. A lot of people would be surprised at how many people don't not only lead with this, but bring it up. Accessibility and options are two huge components of making a decision when you're making a purchase, especially one that you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars on. If you want the shittiest leads of all time, don't address price on your website. Number four, El Quattro. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Mission Control Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Stearns, with the Sun Digital Agency. Today we got Tim Brown, the man, the myth, the legend with Hook Agency. Tim Brown. <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. <sighs> this is What's a, up, Tim? What is it when they when the I'm on TikTok and there's somebody like playing with the mic and they do ASMR? Oh, I'm still on MySpace, so I have no idea what the yeah, TikTok all right, is. Perfect. Yeah. So, it's a completely ASMR episode. <laughs> so Tim, we both have a lot of clients that run effective Google ad campaigns. Um, there's a lot more people outside of just working with us that run ad campaigns. Today I want to talk about what can we do and what can other people do to get cost per leads that are less and less expensive, right? Mm. Everyone's paying attention to what they're spending and what the cost per acquisition of that lead sh is and should be. So let's talk about a few of the things that people can do. Yeah. Is there if I start with repairs? Oh! <laughs> number let's one, repairs. Okay. So I think everyone thinks about repairs um, differently. All over the country, we've got people that don't want to offer them at all. We've got people that don't understand how good it is for your marketing to offer repairs. Mm -hmm. And we... I'm seeing a lot of smart roofers offer basically enhanced enhanced repairs right now with a roof rejuvenation. Ugly roof is one option for that. What I like about it is if you, and I just talked to another one of my clients today that's offering roof repair and they're offering ugly roof, which is a roof rejuvenation product. And they are super excited about it. What, what happens is you're taking that lower threshold of like a $750 repair and pushing it up to like 3000 plus. So a much more profitable repair job requires two people per day. Ugly Roof doesn't sell like franchises. So they literally only work through roofing companies because they also want them to make tweaks on the actual roof itself. Like there, there's, it's not just you're spraying this thing that, increases the life of the shingle and maybe looks it makes it look nicer because they also do a wash it's also you need to get up there and make any other like actual um repairs any specific things that need to be uh, changed that that aren't like visual mm -hmm. um that might cause leaks so it's in addition to other things you're already doing on repairs but it's a way to increase the perceived value because marketing is all about perceived value not just value mm -hmm. perceived value is a clean roof that looks nice, maybe looks refreshed, rejuvenated, if you will. And it's a funny word, rejuvenation. But nonetheless, that's a very good one to decrease your cost per lead because if you can offer that, then you don't have to get, what I see is clients trying to get really vigorous about removing any keywords that might attract repairs. And if you remove all the keywords or like, please stop giving me repairs, if you get really intense about that, yes, you can try. First of all, it's just going to make it a lot more expensive. All your ad costs are going to go up and up and up. And, and who Googles roof replacement, full roof replacement? Yeah, that's a good point. Tim, what do you see as far as the highest volume keyword search typically within your ad campaigns? Usually the most general. So like, like roofer, roofing, roofers, roofer, roofing contractor, local roofer, best, mm -hmm. best local roofer, roofer all me. kinds of things, basic, basic keywords. Yeah. And they, they, they're not, they're not defining that because they don't know. They don't know if they want to repair. They, they probably think on average that they do want to repair, but they don't know yet. They're just trying to get an assessment to be able to like, hopefully the lowest cost possible thing, which obviously we don't want them to get the 
you know, I don't want you to, I'm not telling you to offer $250 repairs. I'm telling you to offer higher price, but not $15,000 option. Yeah. I would love to do like market research or some sort of study to see, to figure out in the mind of a homeowner, how many people that really, and there's really no way to do this, but if you have somebody who has a 25 year old roof or a 20 year old roof, right. And they just know that it's got to be replaced. How many of those people are still searching for repair, right? Because people want to spend as little as possible in that instance because they know it's such a high ticket item, right? Most mm-hmm. I, I, We get a lot of searches like cost of roof replacement. Mm-hmm. We get a lot of those. And so people are inquisitive as to what it's going to take. And guess what numbers they're seeing when they Google roof replacement cost? They're pretty high. It's not a couple bucks, right? Um, so I think uh, it's very important to absolutely put yourself in the, throw your hat in the ring, so to speak, when it comes to repairs. And, and Tim makes a great point. A lot of the times we can't discern from the marketing agency side what somebody who's looking for a roofer wants, right? It could be a, a real estate agent looking for one of those free inspections that we know that all of our clients love and just yearn for, <laughs> right? It could yeah. be that, you know, they could be, <laughs> they could be on the board of an HOA and they could have 50 different buildings that they need roofs on. Or guess what? You know what? They could say, yeah, I noticed that uh, my flashing isn't snug and I need somebody to come throw some tar on it or something, right? Like who knows? But with that being said, you're going to take the good with the bad as well. So not only if you're targeting repairs where you get a lower cost per lead, but if you're targeting those general keywords, you're going to have the opportunities to take swings at those big jobs. Me speaking from experience, I would say 10% at least of roof repair leads turn into a replacement on the spot. If I had a gun to my head, that's the number I'm going with, at least 10%, Mm. one in 10 of people Mm -hmm. that called and scheduled for a repair were sold a replacement. I think I'm gonna dig into that. What would would you say if you had to guess, Tim, based off of your experiences? I don't know, I don't think I have that data, but if I, I would guess higher. Yeah. I mean, well, I work with a lot of roofers that like to flip those. (laughs) I work with the roofers that like to flip those into replacements and I don't hate it, especially if they can use insurance, if insurance, if there's something available for them to use. I mean, I encourage it. I just also believe a repair option makes, it also makes you more credible. So besides the fact that it decreases your cost per lead, if you have that option, if you show them two things, this, this wouldn't be perfectly ideal, but if we could refresh the look of your roof for 3,500 and we could do a replacement for 15,000, like you have these two options. This one's not ideal, but we could offer it to you. How much more credible does it make this item look? And if they're both, this is the clincher. What if they're both the same profit? Oof. Because if you know your numbers and you're looking at that that repair and one of them requires a full giant squad and one of them requires two guys with a hose and some chemicals. Some chemicals. (laughs) We got profit. Yeah. We got profit, sir. So like basically there's just knowing your numbers will maybe... If you got this down, like what could your profit per repair with a rejuvenation option, you might want to offer that more often. And and this is, people are going to hate this, but it's true. The insurance company is going to probably like that. Like, and I know that we're like, at, sometimes roofers, it's, we're at odds with insurance companies, but at the end of the day, if you have that option, it's a, in a way, it's a legitimizing thing too. And I think, uh, I think just for the fact that insurance companies will like it, I do think that the industry is going to go a little bit more that route. Like, you know what I mean? Like the, the insurance agents agencies are a little bit of a magnet for the industry. It pushes Mm -hmm. whatever they're doing, whether it's in reaction and a negative reaction to what the insurance agencies are doing or, or, uh, or roofers that want to do more of what the insurance agencies want because they want to be in a good place with them, the industry is going to go a little bit more, you know, in this direction, I think, because insurance agencies are, are going to want more repairs in the next, I, this is what I'm hearing. I don't even know. I hear, I, I, I don't know why, but I hear roofers talking about this. The, the agent, the game is changing 
insurance companies are probably going to tighten up around the like replace everything thing. And this is one way to circumnavigate that and still be profitable. So what's the average ticket on a rejuvenation? You said 3,500 bucks. Basically you can offer it, I think from like 35, like 3,000 to 4,500. Like there, it's not that like, we're going to have to get bros on one of these. Price, but you could essentially make it profitable. What's up? We're going to have to get bros on one of these. Yeah. No, to, I, I think they'd the be a great guest because they're yeah. very smart and they ha they are doing it with MHI. Mm -hmm. And I just see, I see a lot of very smart roofers. Like off the top, DreamWorks, you and I both love those guys. Like the um, Andy's Roofing, like Eustace Roofing, like people that I like look at and I'm like, damn. They know what they're doing. They know their numbers. They're tight. They're smart. Mm -hmm. I see those people adding this, layering this on. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, commercial roof coatings where maybe it's less functional as far as adding lifetime to the roof, which I'm not educated enough in the rejuvenation side to, to know that. But even, you know, it's the aesthetic of it, right? Um, and the ticket, right? So if you could have another tool in the bag where you know what, for eight, 1200 bucks, let's say, or 800 bucks, we can, you know, do X, Y, and Z to repair your roof, but it still kind of looks like shit. We can make it look kind of brand new and it's only going to cost you another three yeah. grand. People want that curb appeal as a homeowner, yeah. right? That's why people get their home, their vinyl siding power washed, right? Because it starts to yeah. look like shit and it kills the appeal of their home. And if you just wash it like the, what is it? The soft wash. It, dry, it can dry out the shingle, especially if you did that often. Yeah, it might. Um, I may or may not have had some, you know, blog content written about, you know, the, these types of things. <laughs> yeah, dry out that, dry out that roof. All right, let's get to number two. What else can you do to lower your cost per lead? So you'd mentioned DreamWorks, right? Charlie and Steven, shout out to the guys over at DreamWorks Roofing, and well, yeah. Um, so. We, uh, I saw that you did a, like a roof calculator for them, right? Yes. So what exactly does that entail on their site? Yeah, so for us, part of it is to, you know, price. Price is the big objection for everybody. And so we avoid it in our marketing, but we have to address it in our sales. So what they were trying to do with, and this is, they're really the masterminds of this calculator. And I think like anything you can do to address the price objection sooner in your marketing is a smart thing. They also send it to people that are already in their funnel to get rid of tire kickers. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things where if you get it down, here are the levers that affect price. You let them play with that calculator. You make it easy enough to use. I think a calculator on your roofing website will help your business get rid of tire kickers and it will allow people to understand the mechanics of what things positively or negatively affect price. Mm -hmm. And if you allow people to do that, one, you're letting them go further down the sales funnel than your competitors are, mm -hmm. right? Because your, your competitors are saying, all right, I know you're up here on the sales funnel. Let's let's try to make a sales funnel. I know you're way up here on the sales funnel, but nice sales before funnel. you go, what's that? That's a nice sales funnel. Thank you. I'm trying. <laughs> if you let them go up here and you say, all right, you have to like convert now. Don't, I want to talk to you. They don't, first of all, they don't want to talk to you. No. Like homeowners, my wife wants to press a button and the roof to go on. Like that's what she wants. She doesn't mm -hmm. want to talk to a salesperson because... Some of them are weird and some of them are pushy and some of them are whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So the point is, is like if, the more you can let them go down the sales funnel on their own without having to talk to a human being, that's the modern expectation. And the expectation is increasing for how far they want to go down the sales funnel before talking to a person. They expect that. So if they don't get it from your website, they're going to get it from Angie or somebody else who's got this you know, the ridiculous pricing calculator or like some kind of range blog post that's just so far off just so they can get these bad leads with low expectations, like weird expectations into their funnel. Yeah, or one of these other weird aggregate sites that you've probably never heard of that kind of pop up where it's like, okay, well, 
once you put in all the information, right, now give us all your information. Mm -hmm. And now you've got five contractors calling you, similar to, like, you know, one of these big lead aggregators. And there's a good chance that you're not one of those five, right? Unless you're paying them a subscription. So why not just do it yourself? Um, I know from, from my experience, we developed a, a web-based instant roof quote app about a year and a half ago. And we've seen a lot of success as far as converting searches. Because if you think about it, <laughs> the shitty millennials like myself and then the Gen Z that are soon to come are going to be home buyers. We're already home buyers, right? And then the Gen Z is going to come in down the, they're coming down the pipe. So it's like immediate gratification is real and the need to adjust so that you're not on the wrong side of the creative destruction cycle is imminent, mm -hmm. right? And it's only mm -hmm. going to become more and more important. So, you know, when someone's looking for the cost of a roof or a local roofing company and they see the fact on like a headline on Google, like how can we be different? Like how, how can our copy stand out? And it's like, Number one roofer here, best rated roofer here. Like those things are good. We use copy like that as well. But we mm -hmm. also use things like in 30 seconds or less, get a roof replacement quote. And that shit works, right? <laughs> People click on it um, and they convert because you start walking them down the path of giving them what they want. And, you know, like you said, the levers that we pull as far as how can we give them somewhat accurate pricing? Okay, so it, it pings the roof to have an understanding of the size. What is the slope factor? A homeowner doesn't know what a 412, 812, 1212 pitch factor is, right? And they don't give a shit. But we allow them to pick a picture which represents how steep that roof is. What does your roof you know, look most closely like? Um, <clears throat> we ask them qualifying questions as far as like, are you using insurance? Do you want to use financing? We'll get to more of that in a minute. I see you lighting up over there, right? So then they get their price for their roof quote. And it's one of two things. Either you get them out of your funnel and it was going to be dead time that your sales team invested or the sticker shock is out of the way and guess what? You've got all the qualifying information. You know the price that they gave them and that they're okay with meeting with you. It's your mm. deal to lose at that point, right? Yeah. So we yeah, found I, it to be very helpful. I, we almost had a little debate on the stage of one industry, one model dot coms. Uh, uh, final kind of Q&A session mm -hmm. at, in Minneapolis because I said, you know, if you don't, if you want the, the shittiest leads of all time, don't address price on your website. If you want those, if you want the worst leads that are tire kickers, if you really love those, don't ever address price. <laughs> And somebody else is like, absolutely not. You cannot do that. Like basically somebody disagreed with me. I like a little creative disagreement, but uh, we do it on our site. We address price and I believe it's, it's helps. It helps a lot because once you get, and it's really, where are you at in your business? If you're sure. at the spot where you don't have the leads, you don't have 10 leads per week. Don't do this. Not yet. Cause you just need to crank that thing open and you just need to get more leads. Yep. But once you get yep. to a certain point and you've got a good chunk of leads flowing in, you can start to like decrease the amount of time that your salespeople spend with shitty. And it, it does depend. Do you have like five salespeople that are sitting around? Then maybe you don't actually want to right. address price just yet. But if you, if you have less salespeople, you can increase the, the filter, Filtering is a function of marketing. Marketing should filter yes. a little bit. Yes. And that's, it's tough because we want lower cost per lead. Right. But you know, it's an efficiency thing, right? And I think a lot of people overlook the, the value of you know, having five sales reps run 10 appointments a week. Let's mm -hmm. say 10 wasteful appointments that were never going to yep. be actual buying opportunities mm -hmm. that could have been hedged by qualifying them in some capacity, even asking vetting questions to that customer when they're calling mm -hmm. you to get a good understanding of if it's yep. going to be a good fit for them um, would be a step in the right direction. So let's move on to financing. How can financing and offering financing play into like a Google ad strategy? You can lead with the monthly number instead of the full roof replacement. Actually, most people don't ever put anything about their full roof replacement ranges or anything like that in Google Ads because they don't want them to. But it could be a difference maker if you actually include numbers for a monthly payment, where monthly payments might be a, a common number or where it starts. Um, 
I believe finance and even just saying you offer financing mm -hmm. on average will really help uh, increase the amount of results that you get from your Google ads campaign and you know, Facebook ads campaign. But I, I was going to say, I might even argue that like, if I was looking at Facebook ad leads versus, <laughs> versus door knocking, <laughs> I would almost rather have my guys do door knocking than go out to Facebook leads. Oh, Tim. <laughs> oh man. You know, <laughs> you can cut that if you hate it. Um, <laughs> So sell, so sell the monthly payment, right? Yeah. And this is yeah. tried and true. Like this, with it. Yeah. Yes. And this isn't earth shattering. Like if you go sit down in a car dealership, my truck, I got a Sierra, right? And it was like $60,000 or something. And guess what that sales rep didn't do? He didn't inundate me and bring to my attention every step of the way the fact that it was going to cost me $60,000 to leave with, with this truck, right? He told me that, he beat me up about the fact, or beat into me that it was going to be $704 a month, right? Because mm -hmm. that's much more comfortable, right? It's what like, kind of seven, car you got, bro? Jeez, I, got a Sierra, I got a Sierra. What is, is that a, that's a truck? Yeah, GMC Sierra. What do you need a truck for, bro? This guy's, this guy's Dude, already Dude, I do roofing marketing. marketing. Okay, look, yeah. sometimes you gotta look the part, right? And we talked about yeah. this before. If I'm out on a golf course, I golf like shit. There's a good chance I'm shooting 100 or 100 plus. Maybe I'll yeah. get lucky and shoot a 95, but guess what I'm not gonna do? I'm not gonna be out there in sweatpants and a t-shirt. I'm gonna get a nice golf polo, some nice shorts on, have yeah. some golf spikes. I'm gonna have a Titleist glove. I might even buy some Titleist balls, even though I know damn well if I leave with 12 balls at tee off, I might make it back with three. <laughs> so you got to look the part right. sometimes. Yeah, um, I dig it. I, dig it. I did have a wrap <laughs> truck for a little while, but I got rid of it because it was a piece of shit. But <laughs> yeah, uh, coincidentally, well, no. this truck, it blew a header at like 12,000 miles. So I was super excited about that. Oh, no. <laughs> so lead with the monthly payment, Yeah. you know, because that's more affordable. People can justify that, right? They can digest it more easily and they can start to figure out in their budget how they can make sense of actually paying for this roof. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I wouldn't say you'd be surprised, but I think for the people watching, a lot of people would be surprised at how many people don't not only lead with this, but bring it up. Accessibility and options are two huge components of making a decision when you're making a purchase, especially one that you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars on. Right. So mm -hmm. to let people know exactly what that looks like and how accessible you can make your product to them undoubtedly helps you close more deals, right? Yeah, like, and if you're gonna get down to it eventually anyways, like, hey, if you can't afford this $15,000 roof, have we got an offer for you? It's $150 per month for this many months. Like, why are you hiding that till the end? Don't <laughs> bury the lead. And yeah. th like, that's a journalism term, term L-E-D-E. It's, they basically say the spicy, like I always use the word spicy. Less the, spicy. The spicy, interesting, like nugget of the story. That's an interesting nugget of the story. You're putting it way down here. You need to put it up here at the top. You start with the most interesting part of the story, you know, and, and it captures their attention. And the interesting part of the story here is that it, you'd be surprised how little a roof could cost. Right. Yeah, and you know, you think about it and you know, people have egos, right? And like if I'm looking to buy a roof and I get three quotes and two people have talked in depth about financing and once, you know, grazed the surface of it or didn't even really mention it at all, I might not want to ask them, right? Maybe my pride gets in the way and I don't want to ask them if they offer financing cuz mm -hmm. you know, I already have two that I know do and I know what the plan looks like. So, don't leave it up to chance, right? Mm -hmm. Take advantage of every opportunity to the fullest extent. Lead with the monthly number. Yes, sir. Got it. You got anything you don't else judge before? people. What's that? You don't What's judge, that? And you don't judge people and you train right. your salespeople not to judge people. This is not, I don't know, man, maybe people judge me, but I just want to share. I financed our carpet. It was $10,000 for this carpet. And I just, for me, it felt like I've got $10,000, but I don't want to spend all of that $10,000 at this moment. I even have more than that. You, Maybe even 20, maybe more. Let, let me hold the point some. Is, yeah. <laughs> the point is, is like, just because they have that money doesn't mean they want to part with it at this second. And the, the, 
economy is weird and the num the what money is worth is going down. So it's really not the worst decision for them to do this. It's not a bad decision if they get you know good terms on this financing. Tommy Mello says not to call it financing it, to call it promotions, which I think is uh, uh, pretty smart. He calls it promotions, and he's, you know, the... Garage. Take away the negative connotation that some people yeah. might associate with it. Yeah, smart. and I basically just don't think it's a big deal. You don't have to judge people, and it's not it's not because they're poor or, you know, like people may have not great credit scores, but you should also offer it to everybody. You shouldn't... There's actually some legal reasons why you should, if you're going to offer it to some people, you should offer it to everybody as well. Hmm. That's interesting. Very smart. Well, I'm not an attorney and I know nothing about the legalities of it, but what I can yeah, tell so you. I'll, I'll caveat that as well. I, yeah. do, I don't either. <laughs> but what I do know is that's what I've heard from smarter people than me that know more about the legalities. So, 100%. Um, what else you got for it before we wrap up? All I want to say is come to one industry, one model.com. Uh, it's so the website, but also the event. We're all over the country. The next one is in Colorado. Um, we are going to be in Orlando after that. We're going to be in uh, Omaha, August 17th through 18th. Philadelphia, August 30th through 31st. Charlotte, September 13th through 14th. Nashville, September 27th through 28th. Two more. Dallas, uh, October 12th to the 13th, and Salt Lake City, October 25th to the 26th. And it's really partly about selling, financing more often, and maybe connect. There's a few financing partners that will be there, like Enhancify and Sunlight and a, a few other ones, uh, mm -hmm. Captain. Um, people that are kind of well-regarded in financing and to just kind of be able to, you can compare offers because there's more than one of them there. Sure. Um, and it's smart people that are talking about this and the future of roofing. So it's about leadership, financing, and the future of roofing. And, and there's some sales, there's some salespeople too. We got like Chuck Toki and stuff like that on some stops. We got some other cool people. It's just it's the real reason you should go is because it's community and we're coming close to your city. So just it's an easy one to get to. Get away for a couple of days, sharp, sharpen the axe, and uh, meet just hang out with some cool people. That's really what I like about it. I uh I really appreciate a lot of the people that I'm on tour with. I feel like I'm just getting to rub shoulders. It's you, anytime you can rub shoulders with people. It's not those, these events are not that big. It's yeah. like 50 to a hundred roofers, like to get around these 10 speakers and just kind of like be chummy with them and chat with them and go to dinner with them and stuff like that. Like that's cool. That's different than some of these places. Cause you go to bigger events. It's like, you know, a thousand, 3000 people. This is like chill. And you're getting to hang out with people and it's kind of intimate and, uh, and ask questions. Like everyone that wanted to ask questions at the event, everyone got to ask their question. There was no like, no one didn't get to ask all their questions. So it's just a cool, more intimate event than a lot of the stuff out there. Nice. So if people want to learn more about the event and where do they, where do they go to? Oneindustryonemodel.com. Nice. There's also a Facebook page I saw recently, right? Um, they, I'm sure they can connect with you if they got questions. Yes, absolutely. Connect with me. Fantastic. Tim Brown and Facebook.com slash invigorated. Look at that. And I'll tell you folks, I haven't been to an event, but I have seen multiple five-star endorsements as far as what people have taken away from the event. So be sure to hit my guy Tim up. And uh, hey, thanks for joining us, Tim. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, brother.